declared a loon from scratch. OK, so we started the beginning of measure 25 and learned a little bit about rolling. Uh, let's go ahead and work on the rest of that measure. And let's go ahead and clip that out and learn these, the rest of those notes, OK? In fact, if I think we can go ahead uh, and, whoops, excuse me, let me get that done right again. Let's go back to here. I think we can probably learn uh, the next two measures, in fact. Let's give that a try. Let's see how that works, OK? Because that'll then bring us to the end of this page, and then we can focus on getting to the next portion, which would be awfully nice. Okay, so let's just go ahead, just to, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and paste this onto a, no, a new portion over here. And let's do that. I'll make this a little easier to see. Okay, here we go. So we know this chord, and again, as a reminder, this is the octave of symbol. That's it's uh, drawn with the eight VAs an as an abbreviation of octava eight notes or one octave higher. Now notice you also have this kind of tail line that goes and extends from here, and it sort of ends this little ending mark here. So that simply means that this chord, this chord, and this chord are all going to be up in this region. Okay? And if you notice, guess what? They are all the same. So you roll this in the right hand three times. So that's pretty easy, right? Now, the hard part's the left hand. So the left hand doesn't have that octave. We just started our roll here, OK? Now, here comes the, um, the juicy part and also the tricky part. Take it one note at a time. Uh, again, just notice that all of these chords are rolled, OK? There's a roll here. This note, the notes do change over here, but we'll get to that in just a second, OK? Let's focus first on the left hand, all right? And let's learn all, the, all of our notes. So we started off with an F octave with these two notes in the middle. Now, take a look at this, this, these two notes over here. It's also an octave, but take a look at here. We have flats, and if you look carefully, these flats are applied to these Fs. Now, do you remember in our previous lesson, we had that C, and we were asked to play a C flat, and there was nothing next to it. Remember that C? There was no black key here, so we had to go here for a C flat. Same thing is going to happen with the F. When we're asked to play an F flat, there is no black key next to that. So we're going to move to here. This is an F flat. OK? So that brings us to this portion over here. Now, uh, knowing that that's an F flat, let's go ahead and map out the rest of these notes over here. Now, even though this note is off to the side, it's only doing so because it's adjacent to the next note, and there's no way of drawing those cleanly together. OK? So F, G, A flat. B flat next to that, D flat, and then that brings us to the next F flat, okay? So, okay, those five, every finger at this point is engaged, okay? Beautiful chord, isn't that gorgeous, okay? So let's play the first two chords like that with the right hand, and then the left hand, woo! Okay, just notice you're playing all three of these black keys, the top two of this set, the bottom of this set, but they're kind of the adjacent black keys, like that. Okay. Try to work them. You can, you can either roll so that you end at the top. And if you want to do the last two, three notes over here in unison with the right hand, that's one option. Or if you want to do it the way I do it, one at a time, but really fast. So it sounds like a harp, OK? Now let's go on to the next chord. <coughs> and notice, again, the outer form of this is an octave. So from the F flat, we're moving to an E flat. So we have an octave over here, E flat, OK? Whew, got some fancy little notes in there. Take a look at that. G flat in the middle. And that G flat over here is adjacent to the A flat over here. And we have that E flat on top. And then this D flat is adjacent to that. Is that beautiful? Listen to that. Whew, gorgeous stuff. So the best way to visualize this is notice that these three black keys, the three black keys here and here, it's the very next black key over here to that. So the only one that we're not playing is this one in the middle here, OK? So if you can just position your hands that way, that'd be great, OK? The hardest thing, of course, is finding this and then finding that quickly. So I guess the best advice I could have for you is to Notice that this D flat stays the same, okay? And so these two fingers are going to have to move down. This stays the same. So if you're looking at just the inside notes, that's what's happening. And of course, this and the outer notes, are; these are moving down. 
See? Okay? So if you want to practice it that way, that's another thing to do. As you know, the top is playing the same. Okay? Now, the octave symbol is done, so we're going to move back down to its normal position over here. Right hand, okay? Let's find those notes. It's almost the same A octave, but instead of that D flat, now we see it moves up to the E flat in the middle here, okay? We had been using 5 2 1 because of the change of the shape. I want you to change to a 5 3 1. Now, we're going to get to a kind of a tricky roll over here. This next roll in the left hand, let me just tell you what some of the issues are, okay? First, let's find the notes really quickly. Um, <coughs> G clef, going down to the E, D, C, B, A. This is an A flat on the bottom, if you can see that, okay? And if you remember, the first line is U, E, G flat. Now, the top note goes to a C. Now, that's, uh, for some people blessed with huge hands, <laughs> they can reach that. Uh, I don't happen to be one of those people. I can't reach it, okay? And I suspect most of you who are watching this video probably can't reach it in one hand position. If you can't, more power to you. Great, I wish I had your hands. Um, so, a couple of options. One option is to, is to sw kind of swing your hand from here, almost like kind of Tarzan swinging on a vine. And so you use this kind of as a fulcrum to swing across. All right? The only other problem is that here's what's happening. Okay? You're kind of crisscrossing the thumbs. This one is coming below. This is coming above. So you're crisscrossing. Now, the good thing is that the right hand is on black keys, which is a higher level, and the left hand is going to a white key, which is a lower level. Okay, so one option is to swing underneath like that. All right, so that's uh, the legitimate option. There is another cheat option, and I studied with a teacher, George Bullett, who was a master pianist, but also taught me how to cheat. <laughs> As long as it sounds good, does it really matter? So he opened my eyes to how malleable and how flexible music really is and how free we are to improvise, really, you know, to make the music sound or feel more comfortable, okay? And when it feels more comfortable, it usually sounds better, too. Okay. So here's the cheat, if you'd like. Don't play the C with the left hand. Play the C with the right hand. And so that'll necessitate a change of fingerings so the right hand will be adding a note. And so the right hand, instead of just this, will be playing that. See how what I'm doing? I've moved this C to the right hand. And then the left hand would just be playing the bottom three notes. So it would sound like this. See? That's the cheat. <laughs> so the original option swing but the problem is that you know it's it's wider than your hand if your hands are too small a, it's, it's easy to miss okay and with practice you can get it. it's not so bad and some people some people slow down there to really make sure they get the note accurately okay so that's one option the other option the cheat option is that so let's hear both ways the real way and then the cheating way okay sounds like this That's the quote-unquote real way. Now here's a cheat. Pretty close. That's hard to tell. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, one last thing, very quickly. I'm running out of time with this lesson. But pedal on every single measure like this, and you want to hold the fingers until you can change. C, and then here. Another reason why I like the cheat fingering is that you can hold all the notes for the catch the pedal. Okay. All right. So. I showed you how to roll chords. We've just finished the end of the second page. Now we're on to the most beautiful third page. I'll see you at the next lesson.